Japan. The home of anime, Pokemon, Mario, and PlayStation, Japanese culture has always had deep roots within gaming. Even though many of the most popular gaming trends began in Japan, Japanese culture has significantly fallen far behind in today's modern gaming culture, the biggest of which would be esports. Even within games that are extremely popular in Japanese society, such as Smash Bros, there's still a very slow shift towards pushing esports as a true traditional sport. League of Legends is the world's biggest esport, and in 2016, Riot opened up an official League of Legends server in Japan, something they didn't do for a lot of other Southeast Asian countries, even though their regions had more players and a bigger fan base. At the time, it made a lot of sense. Japanese players like gaming. There's 200 million of them, and there's a great potential to grow. Yet to this day, after five years of its release, the Japanese server still has the lowest amount of players out of any official Riot server. In fact, the rank system is so bad, their own professional players refuse to play on their own native server. In this video, we will be discussing all of the major factors that contributed to leading up to the disaster of the Japanese server, along with interviews with current professional Japanese pro players. They will illustrate some of the most sad yet hilarious problems that the JP players face on a daily basis. This is League of Documentary. Before we can talk about the Japanese server, we have to talk about another collective group of servers and their effect on the Japanese. If you've been in esports long enough, you've probably heard of Garena. Garena is a Singaporean company that gets its name from the term gaming arena, and it distributes game titles throughout Southeast Asia. Games like FIFA, Arena of Valor, and of course, their biggest one, League of Legends. It's based in places such as the Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. Garena is a separate company from Riot Games, so it does not actually take direct orders and do everything that Riot does. Riot Games makes the drugs, and Garena is simply the drug distributor. While League of Legends itself does follow all of the patch updates and balance changes that Riot Games implements, they don't need to implement all the rules and systems that Riot Games has implemented onto their players. One of the biggest issues with the Garena servers is... They are infamously shit. There are constant problems with the servers themselves. One of the biggest issues is simply that the Garena servers constantly go down. In fact, if you Google LOL Garena server, the most common searches that come up are either server down or server status. Even when Garena players are able to get into a game, they still don't necessarily enjoy those games that they play. This is because one of the biggest implementations that Riot has spent years working on is not put into the Garena server. And that is the system of punishment for toxicity on the players. The strict rules that Riot enforces on the majority of their players do not get applied to Garena whatsoever. It's very often that Garena players will throw shots at each other more than they throw skill shots at the enemy team. Garena decided either that it's too much work to uphold a positive environment, or that you should just let Southeast Asian players be super toxic. And that's exactly the case. <laughs> I hate these Laplang games. Many players in Southeast Asia will try to play on bigger regions such as Korea or China. But if you try to connect to a Chinese server from a foreign country, what they will do is intentionally slow down your ping and charge you a premium fee in order to turn that ping into an acceptable level. So many of these Southeast Asian players simply want to be able to find a good server that they can play on without having to deal with the poor conditions of their native servers. Enter Riot Japan. The Japanese server is an official Riot server with an effective punishment system as well as a home country that was well known for hospitality and kind manners. So on opening day in 2016 of the Japanese server, it was completely flooded with toxic ass Garena players. <laughs> <laughs> 
To this day, the Japanese server is still filled mostly with foreign players. In fact, last season, only two out of every five challenger players in Japan were actually Japanese. When you have a server filled with Japanese, Chinese, Vietnamese, Taiwanese, Singaporeans all on one server, what language are you supposed to be communicating in? The answer is English. English is taught as a main curriculum throughout all of these countries, and League of Legends is based in America, so many English names will be transferred over. Now, here's something that you should know about Asians that live in Asia. Asians in Asia are super racist to other Asians in Asia. Chinese people hate Japanese people. Japanese people hate Koreans. And Koreans think they're better than everybody else. Suffice it to say, on a server where you have all of the above and more, there's a lot of racism that occurs on this server. Chinese and Korean players call the native players Japanese trash. The Japanese players tell the foreigners to go back to their own country. Essentially, the Japanese server is the same as America, except with Asians. So imagine you're a new Japanese player. You heard about League of Legends and people told you that it was a fun game. So you decided to try it out. You like the game and get through your first 30 levels and decided that it's time to play your first ranked game. What could go wrong? Well, you get spam pinged by a player from a foreign country flaming you in another foreign language, saying things to you like, of course you're shit, you're Japanese. It's pretty difficult for new Japanese players to want to stick around in this game when these are the challenges that they're going to be facing as soon as they get into ranked. Some of the most common insults that Garena players use are as follows. Mom die, mom kill, and of course the classic, mom boom. Look at this, it's America, speak English. Speak English. Well, these guys are in Japan and they still have to speak English. The MMR system is a pure numbers game. There are more challenger spots in Korea because there are more players on the server. The average number of players in any given region is about 1 to 200 players on the challenger ladder. So what happens to the server with the lowest population? If you look at the challenger ladder on the Japanese server, the drop off from challenger to masters is pretty fucking fast. Combined, masters, grandmasters, and challenger don't even hit 200 players. If you hit Diamond 1 0 LP, you are now officially in the top 500 players of Japanese solo queue. Due to the low population of the Japanese server, it creates a whole host of other new problems. This is a game that the rank 1 player in Japan played, but he's got a team of Diamond players and even a Plat 1 player on his team. Due to the extremely low amount of players, not only are queue times insanely long, they also mean that teams will have absolutely no balance whatsoever. This is Creative. He's a current pro player in Japan and he talks about the worst case of matchmaking that he's ever gotten. So imagine playing this game, hitting Silver 1, and then having to play against one of the best players in your entire region. Despite its small size, Japan does actually have a pro scene. It's called the LJL. But if you're a pro player in Japan, and your native server is notorious for poor game quality and foreigners ruining your games, what are you going to do? Pretty simple. You go to a foreigner's country. Korea is pretty damn close to Japan. All the pro teams in Japan practice in Korea instead of their own native country. Detonation Focus Me Gaming is the top team in Japan. They have been number one in their region for almost the entire existence of the LJL. Their pro players have multiple accounts in the challenger ladder of Korea. But this is not the case with most of the LJL. In fact, most of the other Japanese pro teams are made up of players that haven't even been able to hit challenger on the Korean server. In fact, many of them are still hard stuck diamond one and masters in Korea. 
So if you watch games in the LGL, it's about the same as the skill level of the collegiate scene that we have here in North America. You are going to be seeing clean macro or coordinated team fights. Instead, most of the games are consistently decided by a single lane skill difference. Despite Detonation Focus Me's native success, they have never really been able to make it past the play-in stage of Worlds. The minimum salary of an LJL player is around $20,000 USD, and the highest player in the entire league is estimated to make around $140,000 annually. Compare that to the average salary of a North American player, which is somewhere around $300,000 USD annually, and you have a pretty good idea of where they stand. Now, if Japanese pro players all play on Korea, the best server in the world, and they scrim against Korean teams, you would think that when they came back to Japan, the skill level of their own native server would be raised thanks to these pro players, right? Wrong. When pro players return from Japan, they either don't play solo queue or they just troll their games. After all, the quality of games drops significantly from Korea to Japan, so many of these pro players feel absolutely no obligation or motivation to try their best in their own server. If you're going from the best server to the worst server in the world, you can play shit like ADC Ari and still probably get away with it. <laughs> The biggest problem that every Japanese player will tell you is wrong with the server is the lack of players. So why are there so few players interested in League of Legends? There are a variety of reasons as to why Japanese League was not successful, but here are a few of the main points as to why it failed. Number one, Japan is about Japan. If you go to a supermarket, you will find products shipped in and produced from all over the world. But if you go to a supermarket in Japan, it's pretty much all Japanese products. There's a lot of national pride and there's a lot of big monopolies that control the things that Japanese people are able to buy. Although some products have been able to make their way into Japan and become successful, such as Apple, KitKat, and KFC, for the most part, if you go to Japan, you will only find their own products lining the grocery aisles. That's a similar case for gaming. The Nintendo Switch is massive in Japan. Not only does it appeal to hardcore and casual gamers, it's also a portable device. Mobile games dominate much of Asian gaming. Due to people's busy routines, they spend a lot of times on trains commuting from one place to another. Mobile games are a perfect distraction for this time, as is the Nintendo Switch. Japanese people's fundamental idea of what gaming is is significantly different from what it is in our minds. They simply don't see the PC as something that you're meant to play games on. It's a workplace tool. It's not a gaming console, and so that's not its purpose. Riot Games has even tried their own ad campaign with all the questionable Japanese things that come along with a Japanese ad campaign in order to promote League of Legends. But until the Japanese people change, the biggest issue with the server, which is population, is simply not going to be fixed. Despite the lack of players, pros, and trolls, and foreign players that fuck up your games, the Japanese server does still actually have some good things about it. Although each foreign country does bring their own host of racists, they also bring along their own unique playstyle. Koreans are known for being very patient and methodical. Chinese players are known to be extremely aggressive and fight over everything they can get their hands on. Vietnamese players are known for playing selfish solo queue champions such as Yasuo or Lee Sin. Japanese players are known to be extremely passive. When you have all of these different playstyles mixing in together, it takes the skill level of your native players and improves it. You will find new and interesting ways to play the game. Whereas most regions will develop a single style, Japan has to adapt to multiple styles. By learning and understanding all of the different ways that you can play League of Legends, Japanese players get an exclusive, broader view of what it's like to win in different regions. You have a unique opportunity to be able to deal with and experience different ways that people play the game. Japanese people in general are known for being very humble and very polite and that is reflected in their League of Legends games. Unprovoked, Japanese players pretty much never type, but one of the best things about Japanese players themselves is the fact they are known for never giving up. Each one of them is their own little protagonist in an anime, which will never stop and never give up, not until the Nexus falls. And when I play on NA with like around, let's say 160 ping, which is 
fine. I mean, the culture in NA, how I feel as an Asian player, is that they tend to give up way too easily compared to at the Japanese community where they would constantly try to end. I like to call this a Tyler 1 effect in NA, that as soon as you die once, you just spam FF. I feel like every game I play on NA has been people trying to give up and just not caring, saying this is just a game, who cares, stop trying so hard. These guys will never give up because they just feel lucky to be playing the game, and the point of the game is to just try your best. Despite all the problems that this server faces, thousands of dedicated Japanese fans still log on every day to play something that they truly enjoy. Wait, wait. <laughs> no!